Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our evening of Centering in Chaos. We'll see what what happens this evening. Hopefully we can all leave feeling a little bit more centered with some pause in our day. So we're gonna start with just taking a moment to do uh, an invocation and just calling in some support outside of ourself. Hey, Jeff. Welcome. Thank you. Mm, hello, Ruth. And if you are not already, if you could go ahead and mute yourself. Okay. All right. Hmm. I'm just taking a moment to settle in this evening, to drop in, maybe even noticing the feet that are yours connected to your body and the way that the feet are connected to the floor beneath you. And knowing that beneath that floor is an earth, this earth that we call home. And perhaps imagining that there are roots extending down from your feet all the way to the earth, connecting you, supporting you. And as we turn our attention to the four cardinal directions, we turn our attention to the east, the energies of the east, the place of springtime and new beginnings, the irises popping up, the daffodils popping up, birth, baby's laughter. When we call in these energies for support with gratitude in our hearts, blessed be. And turning our attention to the south, the place of summertime and energy and activity, the place of manifesting and creating and dance and expression, high noon. And hummingbird and calling in these energies for support thank you for the way in which you teach us and guide us in our lives blessed be and moving around this medicine wheel to the west oh the west the place of going inward the place of going down the spiral, into the spiral, time of harvest. That time where things start to slow down a little bit. Those evening walks, that crisp air. The place of snake. Beginning to shed your skin. I'm calling in these energies. I'm grateful for the way in which you teach us. Blessed be. And turning around the wheel to the north, the place of the elder, of sovereignty. place of gratitude and grief, the place of surrender and letting go, the winter time, looking out across the, the plains after a long snow, 
the stillness after that snow. And that time of hibernation in place of bear. I'm grateful for these energies in our lives and the way in which they show up and support us and the way that we can tap into these energies anytime we need. Thank you to the North. And turning our attention upward to the great sky nation, the great above. And our solar system and all those stars and mother moon, a place of infinite possibility. The place where anything can happen Everything and nothing all at once. In particular, acknowledgement of this eclipse and the sun, our sun, that shines down on us every day. Turning our attention downward to Mother Earth, to Pachamama, the place we call home, the place of belonging, the place of nurturance, the place of birth and death, of cycles and rhythms. Grateful, grateful for you and the way that you give and give and give and reminding us that scarcity is an illusion. And abundance is possible and is here for us to tap into. And now turning our attention to the center of the wheel, the place where those good medicine people, those that came before us, those that carried these traditions and these ways, they're at the center of the wheel. Grateful for the way in which they lived their lives. And may we hold these teachings and these ways of being in a good way. And to our bright and shiny ancestors, those that lived well and died well, those that are well in spirit, that are standing at our back, whispering our, in our ear, helping us remember who we are and what we came here to do. Grateful for your presence in our lives, calling on your support this evening. And finally, to the spirit, the spirits of this land, the land of the Blue Ridge Mountains, those standing tall ones, those flying high ones, to aspen, to birch, to pine, to hummingbird, to owl, to hawk, to bear, to coyote, to turtle. Thank you for your wisdom and your teachings, and thank you for being with us this evening. And all of this energy and all these supports drawing on your wisdom, acknowledging your presence with a heart full of gratitude, blessed be. Now we are all here, so we can be together this evening. 
So we want to take just a few minutes and introduce ourselves, Leanne and I. So Leanne, do you want to go ahead and share a little bit? I can. Um, I am Leanne Feliciano. I have been with Rites of Passage for two years now. I went through my training with uh, Cater and the calling was very strong. Um, my background is in hypnosis and shamanic practices and plant medicine. I have studied under a teacher by the name of Pam Montgomery and got my degree in holistic uh, uh, healing arts and uh, my master's in hypnosis. And so it weaves a beautiful web with the work that uh, Rites of Passage uh, provides. And so when I came into Rites of Passage, I had a deeper calling of uh, wanting to connect deeper to the elements and to, uh, to the world around us. And so through vision questing and the teachings, um, I gained a deeper understanding and a, and a zest and excitement for sharing um, what this work can do for the world. And so um, it is a, an honor to be a part of this and an honor to sit with all of you this evening. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it right now. Thank you, Leanne. Ah, well, let's see where to start. Uh, like which which entry point do you want to to start at? Um, I started working with Rites of me. Passage Council. <laughs> yeah, right, right. A condensed one, right? Not the whole life story one. Um, I started working with Rites of Passage Council about seven years ago, uh, maybe eight now, and uh, I found my way to this this work um, with wilderness therapy work. And so I started working in the woods with adolescents uh, about, it's probably been about 13 years ago now that I started working in the woods with, with adolescents. And that was the first time in my life that I started to feel a purpose bigger than me mm. and something that I felt connected to outside of myself. And, uh, and it, you know, in many ways helped me stay, um, stay on this planet in, in some times that were pretty difficult. And I, I found a connection with the natural world um, and our earth in a way that I had never before and started teaching um, these teens how to do that and, and, to, and how to heal um, in that way. And so I fell in love with, with guiding people uh, then and then ended up following that pathway into graduate work and, and uh, clinical mental health counseling. I'm a therapist and have a private practice, but my love for, for uh, guiding uh, has remained really strong through the years. And so did my first um, vision quest ceremony in 2016 and have just been showing back up to circle and ceremony since then and uh, yeah i'm excited to to just be here and give a little bit of um i guess just some pieces some pieces of of what's near and dear to my heart and and to leanne's as well i know so yeah that's a bit about me. And this evening, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about how to find some centering um, in the chaotic world that we live in <laughs> right now. Um, just to speak to the the chaos that is so so many of our experiences. Uh, you know, we. I don't think I need to really say much to just 
just naming it is it is a difficult time in many ways for many of us um, on this planet right now. It's it is a uh, it is an to me it is an act of courage to be on this planet right now and to be navigating all that we're navigating. And we're in times of really big change, really great change. And uh, through COVID and, you know, the, the state of, of our earth and climate change as it is and uh, the, the great tragedy of disconnection from, from the earth uh, that we see, I feel like now more than ever, it's imperative that we find ways to ground ourselves, to center ourselves, to reconnect with um, Earth as a resource, as um, as a way that we can heal, and to do that individually, so that we can then go out into the world and support uh, support one another in community. Doing that. So. And, and then, you know, that's just kind of the climate of today. And then we have just what's happening um, astrologically for any of those of you who might be astrologically oriented. We've got the solar eclipse and we just had a lunar eclipse and there's um, some big, big energies happening. So it's right on time that we're doing this webinar tonight. I was thinking about that earlier, yeah. Leanne, like it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a good time. No coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out. So uh, talking a little bit about shamanism, animism, just as kind of a preface to what we'll offer this evening. Uh, and maybe many of you or most of you are familiar with, with this. Uh, but just to name that I was looking at a, a chart of the history of religion um, a couple months ago. and shamanic tradition in um, well actually animism is is the originating and first um, religious expression uh, as as a human species uh, so we um, it's the oldest it's it's certainly the oldest and animism you know simply put is is this idea and concept that there is a consciousness that lives within the natural world, within beings outside of human human experience. And we, not only is there a consciousness, but we're in relationship with that consciousness, whether we know it or not. And often we don't know it, but, um, but we are. And so bringing some awareness to that consciousness and to that relationship uh, can be fairly profound, um, it has been for me, in that uh, when we become aware of, of that relationship that exists, we can feed it, we can tend to it, we can have reciprocity with that relationship. Um, and so that's what we're talking about tonight. That's what we're, we're offering uh, is, is this this reminder, and I know, you know, I'm sitting here talking about this, and I need people to remind me about this all the time. It's easy to forget. It's this this forever forgetting and remembering of, oh yeah, I can go outside and sit by the creek and have this conversation and ask for support and feel that nourishment and feel that support. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's so, it can be so simple. It can be as simple as that. Um, you know, we have beautiful, elaborate ceremony and ritual that we do in Rites of Passage um, Council and many other organizations and communities do together. And those are rich and wonderful. Um, and, you know, ritual can be as simple as sitting by the creek and speaking your name, introducing yourself, and offering a prayer of gratitude. And so I just want to uh, offer that as kind of a, as a starting place. And 
Yeah. Do you want to add anything, Leanne? I was just thinking like no, we I'm, could I'm, talk I'm, a little I'm, bit I'm, about I'm, journeying maybe, but yeah. Do you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add on to that well, what you were saying about having that conversation with the creek or a waterfall. It, it is just as grounding and centering when all the chaos is happening around us, when we're speaking to nature and communing and relating and hearing that small whisper. That's the place where centering can happen as well. It, it Oftentimes the chaos within ourselves can calm you know, when speaking to nature or getting your feet into the ground it can be just as grounding and the, your senses can start to begin to um, mediate, balance when having that relationship or that conversation with nature. That's just what came to mind. Yeah. Thank you. Well, do you want to share a little bit about what you're going to offer and maybe we can shift into yeah, that? We can shift into that. So <clears throat> when we think of centering, um, oftentimes um, centering can be about, it's not about your emotions. Uh, you talk, uh, you talk about, um, Centering oftentimes comes into the place of your uh, the middle of your body. It's that inner knowing, that that heart wisdom. It is, doesn't come from the chaotic mind, and nor does it come from the emotional space of the heart. It comes from that heart wisdom, where we can make decisions that are sound and and based on the wisdom of something greater and it is within us but it's something that is greater than us as well that wisdom and when i talk about centering centering is also about that sovereignty you being the sovereign being that you are uh that that sovereign spirit and it's the place where when chaos is happening around you you're not you're not moved. I often think of um, a tree when I think of um, of witnessing chaos. So a tree can often witness hurricanes and fires and um, water and uh, storms and winds, and they're often rooted. Some can be taken out. But for the most part, they're often rooted. They stay rooted during all of the storms. And so that is the place where I'd like for all of you to remember that you come from, is that place of rootedness, center, being, beingness. Um, so we are going to go through um, a journey and to this place where you can find your own center and what that means for you. And what I mean by that is you, you utilizing the elements, you can utilize a mountain. What is your center? Oftentimes we can forget what our center is. So in the midst of chaos, when the mind is racing and the heart is beating so fast and the body feels very shaken, that center point is what allows you to be in that place of not being moved like the tree. So this is a exercise that would can help when chaos comes in and you're not moved. Your mind may move, your heart may flutter, but you're not moved by the space of um, things that create chaos outside of you. Even the stuff that comes in within internally as well. It's like um, being able to quiet the mind and soften the heart in that space. So you can get back to that place of the visualization that we're, we're about to go through. It can tap into, you know, remember, here's the other thing is oftentimes when chaos is happening, 
we have been given this beautiful gift called five senses. We've been given the sense, you know, our five senses of touch and, and, and smell and sight and hearing. And oftentimes that goes out the door because it is a fight or flight experience that we may be experiencing, or at least I have experienced in my lifetime. And so when I allow myself to get back into the place of ha being within my five senses and maybe visualization of what my center is, it allows me to, um, to not be moved. Um, so we're going to go through this place of, hmm, it's, it's, it's like a shamanic journey. It's kind of a meditation as well. Um, and you'll be guided to find what a center, your center is. It can be an iceberg. It can be a volcano. It could be a flower. It can be the tree. But what you're going to do is you're going to find your center so that when you find that center, that's that, that point right there, you're going to find access from above and below. So perhaps your left hand has, uh, for instance, a rock that might be something that pulls gravity down. And then you might grab air that pulls you up that can be and you are the center and so what that does is it helps you to feel into what that beingness that heart wisdom is for you so you'll go through that and it it's probably 10 minutes or so and you'll write you'll draw something what you received and perhaps use your left hand with it uh, when you're drawing this picture. It doesn't have to be pretty. It, it just has to be something that resonates with you. And what this is going to do for you is that when you find yourself in that space of children are not work, uh, children are not doing what you want them to do, something chaotic at work happens, or you're feeling not so mindful, you can go back to this space to help you to navigate how to do something different versus maybe acting out or saying things that you would have never wanted to say before, or it helps you to pause when you allow yourself to get into that place of visualization or remembering that space of where you were in this meditation. Does anybody have any questions so far? Would you like to add something on to that, Kelly? Um, no, that was great. I would just say if you don't have a pen and paper, no worries. Um, you can you can find one after the 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 journey. And what Leanne offered, if you know, if you're left-handed, maybe using your right hand. So whatever your non-dominant hand is right. at the end of the uh, the journey to just, and if pictures aren't your thing, if writing isn't, I mean, if uh, drawing isn't your thing, then maybe you want to write something, maybe stream of consciousness, bringing in some words. But I want to, I want to offer the invitation for curiosity, maybe letting yourself be surprised by what shows up, what shows up on the paper, what shows up in the journey. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Yes. And just having an open mind and not judging what you see, perhaps, you know, tapping into those senses and, um, and like Kelly said, be curious. So give me just a second. So if you are not in a comfortable position, I would encourage you all to place yourself in a comfortable position where you can be in for a few moments. Um, let me see. Technical thing. Can you hear me? 
you're muted. Can you hear me? Sorry, I was muted. I was just saying someone mentioned that your voice is a little low, so maybe just speak up when you're drumming. I can hear you. Hold on one second. Let me... Um... How about now? Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you. Is it louder? It's about the same. Hmm. Hold on. Hmm. Okay. I think I, I think I got it. Okay. <clears throat> You guys hear that in my voice okay all right so take some deep breaths in through your nose when we talk about centering we talk about clearing the mind allowing the space between your mind and your heart to It's because I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Okay. So take some deep breaths in through, through your nose and out through your mouth. Expanding your belly. Clearing your minds. Any chatter that may be happening in this moment. Allow that space to just, just dwindle away. This is your time. This is the time where you can allow yourself to be in that place of centering, that place of knowing. And if you don't know what that knowing is, allow yourself to be curious about what that knowing is. Continue to take a deep breath, relaxing your shoulders, your arms, your chest, your belly, all the way down, allowing all of that energy of the day to just go through your feet and down, 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 down into the earth where Mother Earth can take all of that energy and continue to breathe. to tap into your senses. Perhaps you may not be a visual person. Perhaps you are a person who senses into things or tastes or hears. And clear the clear that thought. Clear the your senses.
allows you to be open to the visualization, the senses, the taste, the smell.
perhaps you have a piece of paper or pen, you may want to draw something, write some words that resonate with you, perhaps your experience. Take a couple minutes. We'll just take another minute or so here. Coming to a pause wherever you're at with your drawing or writing, knowing you can return to it later if you're called. Thank you, Leanne. So we want to open it up for a few minutes and just hear from all of you what stirred in you in that journey, if there was anything that perhaps you were surprised by, any anything that's stirring that, you know, perhaps you want to share what your center point was or any elemental support that was present. Or maybe it, it may have been difficult to reach that access as well mm -hmm. a challenge mm -hmm. Rebecca Rebecca hi hi I, it did feel like a challenge like um, like my mind was zooming through a bunch of options like what could it even be and then um, and then all of a sudden I was sort of diving in the water with a blue whale and just like like mm -hmm. being zoomed through the water you know, before we got to the center point part, but I, I thought that was sort of a cool thing and I wanted to share. Mm. Thank you. Do you have any relationship with whales, Rebecca? Not that I know of specifically, but I did do, um, I did do something uh, with like an animal guide kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. and I just kept going until I found what I thought it was. And, 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 and it sort of ended up being a whale. And I thought I never would have guessed that 
ever, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I would be curious if you did another journey and specifically journey to connect with the whale uh, and ask the whale if if the whale might have some information for you some resource for you that's a good idea thank you Mm -hmm. sure day hi oh you're muted can't hear you I wasn't able to make it on time because I was working, but um, I was surprised how quickly I could um, be relaxed. I really like that drum. Nothing in particular, just, you know, sense of balance and uh, calm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, some of you may be familiar with Michael Harner uh, or the Michael Harner Institute for Shamanic Studies. and. Uh, he did some research along with some others and found that the the drum beat helps us sh- it helps us shift our state of consciousness in somewhere between nine and thirteen minutes. Although depending on the person, sometimes it can be quicker or longer than that. But the the rhythm of the drum beat and the sound and the frequency is both similar to the the frequency of the earth that we have found and been able to measure and it also shifts our state of consciousness so other reflections oh hi morna hi yeah that was see you good to see y'all too um let's see yeah first I was just like walking through that beautiful field of flowers and then I found like this amazing tree and picked up a rock and felt rooted and then lift up and my arm actually turned into a branch and then the leaf was soaking up the sun and then I think there was some guidance about seeing something unusual and the Milky Way was above me while the sun was shining. It was like both and at the same time. And then when we got into the heart space, it was like the light that was protecting me. It was coming out of my heart and shining out. And so the picture that I drew was like this big tree with a heart just shining light out. And then when I looked at the picture again, it looked like a spider web as well. So lots of lovely elements guiding there. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that bright reflection. Yes, Jim. Hi there. Thanks for that. Loved it. Um, I was given a large, cool wooden staff by some elder dude and uh, I was wearing, you know, like, a, I don't know, not my regular clothes, like a cape or something. And then uh, there was like a crystal or something right in the middle of the staff. And that's where that protective light came from. So, mm. yeah, it worked. That works. Awesome. A crystal crystal ball staff sounds pretty pretty <laughs> solid. <laughs> sounds really awesome. <laughs> Hi there. There's... Any other reflections? Oh, go ahead. Uh, this is Colleen. I uh, just wanted to. Hi, Colleen. I'm not very good at computers, so if my screen looks weird, I'm sorry. Um, I had a really neat experience with a turtle and some water, and I love the turtle as one of my spirit guides. And then I found the white wolf was my animal of safety. And um, so the whole experience was really very beautiful for me. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh.
Other reflections or even questions about this process or anything we've been talking about this evening <coughs> with connecting with elemental support or animal ally support? Can, uh, can I share? Yeah, hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going? Good. Yeah, um, I was sitting down in my chair and um, my feet on the ground. And I immediately felt like my body, like the energy shift into my feet in a way that was like super grounding and supportive. And I could feel a lot of anxiety that, you know, maybe living up here kind of settle and go into the earth and yeah felt like I picked up a stone and it visual I could feel like I could just see like my hand like dropping into the earth with the stone and um felt my hand holding a like a twig and uh, up to the sun and, and yeah could just feel almost like a like a not like a white light but like the, the light from the sun like emanating from my heart space and mm -hmm. I felt very peaceful mm -hmm. I appreciate that imagery Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Anne and Kelly. See, Rebecca, yeah. I do have a quick question. Um, I was so into what I was seeing that I didn't hear anything about a protective light until they started talking about their experiences. Can you just refresh what that is for and what or where it comes from or where what point you tap into it? So it's part where you're so once you've gotten to that sensor and you you feel that center space, okay you're utilizing your shield of protection, whether it's lights or it's the sun, um, it, it's to penetrate whatever energies that it want to come in. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? I know we're getting up to the top of our time here. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure connecting with all of you this evening. And thank you again, Leanne, for that beautiful journey. Yes. And also just want to share that Leanne and I will be uh, together again, probably before July, but definitely in July, we'll be doing a program together. And it's specifically for those of us who are in recovery from addictions. And so we'll be deepening into some of this work uh, to support folks who are on their recovery journey, their healing journey, and deepening into uh, some of these uh, rituals and ceremonies and connection with animal helping spirits and elemental support. And we also have another quest, a vision quest program coming up in August that I'll be staffing with a couple other rites of passage staff and that will be another opportunity it's 11 day encampment and involves um, multiple ceremonies as well as uh, the vision quest itself and uh, sweat lodge ceremony among others and so i'll be there with a couple of other rites of passage staff doing that in august and we have a few other programs as well that we're doing this year and you can find all of that information on the website and if you have any specific questions that I can answer feel free to reach out to me my email is on the, the website as well.
All right. Well, take good care and go well. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. You're so welcome. Good night. Thanks, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Stop.